Hi, this is Nelson Patakos with Pro Sport, and this is another routine example of a slap repair, a posterior labral repair, and a rotator cuff debridement. Uh, this patient has a posterior shoulder instability, and he has torn the top of his labrum, which we can see there. And I'm just using this uh, little metal probe here to follow the extent of that tear. We can see that it really extends all the way down the entire posterior labrum here, uh, all the way down to around the six o'clock position there at the very bottom. And so uh, in addition to that labral tearing there below, we can look at the top of the glenoid here and we see this flap component. That's related to his slap tear. It's actually a torn piece of the superior labrum that's flipped up there. And here we have a look at what appears to be a partial rotator cuff tear. Now, as we look more closely, we can actually see intact rotator cuff fibers deep to that. What we're really looking at here is primarily a capsular tear. Uh, so just to review that briefly, the superior capsule, the shoulder, is actually reasonably thick. It's about five millimeters. And we know that the most important component of that from a functional and stability standpoint is this rotator cuff cable component, uh, particularly the attachment sites there. So we're going to begin here by debriding all of the degenerative non-viable tissue. That includes the flap component of the superior labral tear and the degenerative edge here of this capsular tear. Now, as we debris this, we, we do want to make sure that we're preserving that rotator cable uh, and its attachment sites. We can actually see that right here. It's nicely preserved. And really what we can uh, identify here is that this capsular tear uh, occurred in the rotator crescent portion of that capsule. Um, and so as we further debris that capsular tissue away from the attachment site on the humerus, we can see all of those nice rotator cuff fibers that are well preserved. So really, there's minimal disruption of the rotator cuff. So now we're in the front of the shoulder looking back, and we can see the posterior labral tear there. And with it, there is a large flap component. Now, that flap tear is not going to heal. Uh, it doesn't have a blood supply. And so we're going to want to go ahead and debride that, uh, along with any other degenerative tissue that's unlikely to heal well. So we're going to just remove that tissue with a shaver. And then what we're going to do is elevate that labral tissue away from the underlying bone. We need to access that bone, remove all soft tissue that's adherent to it, and then we need to abrade the surface of that bone to stimulate uh, what we call a healing response here. We essentially have to stimulate the bone to heal into the labral tissue once we've repaired it firmly to the socket here. So I'm going to use several devices here. This happens to be a curette. And I'm just going to use these uh, instruments to, to, like I said, abrade the surface, remove all soft tissue. This is a rasp here uh, that I'm going to scrape against that, that edge of the bone there. And then here again, I'm using the shaver just to further remove any soft tissue component. So by fully dissecting out the labrum in the area where it's torn, we're going to be able to mobilize that labral tissue uh, in a way that's going to recreate a very nice bumper for us. And that's particularly important in cases of instability where we want to prevent the shoulder from dislocating. Uh, here we are inserting our first anchor. This is down at around the five o'clock position. Uh, and I've gone ahead and inserted that. This is uh, an anchor made entirely of suture material here. And I'm just using a, a device here to shuttle uh, the repair stitch of this anchor through the capsule as well as the labrum. And so I'm going to uh, essentially placate that capsule to the labrum there and I'm just going to pass in this shuttle which I will retrieve and that's going to allow me to pull the repair stitch from the anchor through the labrum through the capsule and back out the uh, posterior cannula. Uh, once I've done that I'm going to go ahead and shuttle that repair sit stitch through the uh, anchor itself and that's going to allow me to uh, secure the capsule and labrum to the anchor uh, and to do so using this knotless anchor, so without any prominent knots there. Here we are inserting the second anchor, and I'm just essentially going to repeat this process uh, as I make my way up the back of the shoulder here. So again, I'm just passing in the shuttle. We're going to use that to pull the repair stitch through the capsule and labral tissue, and then we're going to load that through the mechanism of the anchor itself. Uh, and once, once I'm happy with the positioning of that, we'll go ahead and tighten that down and we can begin to see the robust bumper that we're able to recreate here. And again, that's going to do a very nice job of keeping the, the humeral head or the ball of the shoulder well centered on the socket. So this is the third anchor going in <clears throat> and I'm just now securing that uh, down to the bone as well. So I'll just cut that stitch from the third anchor and we'll get ready to place our fourth anchor here. 
And using the same exact technique, we will just pass a shuttle through the capsule and label tissue. I'll retrieve that off the front of the shoulder with a grasper. We'll use that to pass the repair stitch around the labrum and capsule, and then we load that into the anchor and secure it. So now we're going to get into the uh, superior labral repair component or slap repair component of this uh, case. And here I'm going to use this uh, shuttling device here to pierce the biceps anchor and uh, pass that shuttle deep to the superior labrum there. And as I shuttle and load these uh, sutures into the anchor, I'm going to be quite careful to not over tension this. We do know that uh, over tensioning a slap repair is a great way to cause uh, ongoing pain. And so we want to be cautious and, and produce a physiologic amount of mobility there. And so this is the second anchor at the top here that I'm inserting. This is our seventh anchor total now. Uh, and again, I'm applying just a light degree of tension there. We can see both anchors uh, securely holding that biceps as it should be held. And so at this point, I'm beginning to evaluate the repair, and I can see just below my most inferior anchor that the tear does appear to extend ever so slightly further. Uh, and so given that, I'm going to go ahead and place one more final anchor here. This is at the 6 o'clock position on the socket, and we're going to just repeat the same steps that we've already completed previously. So I'm passing the suture through the labrum and the capsule. I then load it into the anchor construct and then I tension that, reducing the capsule and labrum to the labral anchor. And so we can see that uh, come in nicely, and I'm just going to trim that suture, and now we're going to take a good look at the final repair. So we can see a nice, robust bumper that we've recreated all the way from the bottom, all the way at the back to the top, uh, concluding with those slap anchors at the top of the socket. So that looks very nice. We can see the ball is well centered on the socket and that should restore uh, normal stability here to the shoulder. This is another view of our slap repair at the top. And this is uh, just another view from the posterior portal of our repair. So that concludes the case. We can see the rotator cuff debridement up above there. Uh, hope that helps. And uh, if there's any further questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks and take care. Bye.